scheduling is very complex, as we know. There are a lot of moving parts. So if you're able to really boil it down into those three parts, pre-scheduling, scheduling, and rescheduling, and you're able to excel in each of those three functions, you're going to put yourself in a situation to be successful. Um, I happened to work in the restaurant industry throughout high school and college, and I worked alongside many great chefs. And when you're a diner, you come in, you sit down for a, a meal on a busy Friday night and you have a wonderful dinner. You don't often think about all of the prep work that has to be done during the course of the week to excel. So that's an analogy that I like to use that pre-scheduling is kind of like the prep work that any great chef must do in order to be successful. And there are really a lot of different phases when it comes to pre-scheduling. Um, first is maintaining a proper ratio of caregivers to clients. At our agency, we always try to maintain a ratio of about two to 2.33 caregivers for every active client. This is gonna vary from agency to agency. For one agency, that ratio might be one caregiver for every active client. For some agencies, it's going to be three or more. At a long-term companion, we just found that two to 2.33 caregivers for every active client is that proper ratio. And by maintaining that ratio, we're setting ourselves up for success. It's kind of like, just like that chess analogy, if you're outnumbered, you're gonna be in trouble. So you always really wanna be well balanced or be ahead of the game. The second part of pre-scheduling is maintaining a robust system to track the availability of your caregivers in real time. And this is what we refer to as our big board. Um, our caregivers availability is constantly changing. Um, somebody might be available for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one week, and then two days later, they accept the shift with another agency or they have a family event that's taking place and they're no longer available. So as part of our prep work as schedulers in the pre-scheduling phase, we have to communicate with our caregivers regularly and always update their availability in our home care software, which we call the big board. You know, we have to always remember that if you have a client that their schedule is Monday to Friday, 9A to 5P, well, there might be schedule changes for that client. And if you're lucky, you're going to have new clients that you also have to staff for. So you always have to really not only be prepared for the shifts that are currently on your schedule, but for those shifts that are probably likely to happen. And that's why maintaining your caregiver's availability in real time is so important. Um, we also believe in data, using data as part of our pre-scheduling process. And by data, I mean maintaining a very robust caregiver and client profile. You wanna have as much information in your caregiver and client profiles in your home care software and make it easily accessible. Tags are a really nifty way of doing this. Um, our agency uses different tags related to skills, like has dementia experience, has hospice experience, related to preferences, like okay with cats, okay with dogs, and related to scheduling, like available on weekends, willing to pick up late notice call outs, available during the day, available overnights. So we use these tags and the match criteria to really be able to run reports, to glance at a top level, and to, to use efficiency when it comes to pre-scheduling. Another core component of pre-scheduling is having daily meetings with your HR and your sales team. Um, your sales team knows what prospects are in the pipeline. And as a scheduler, I'm sure that we've all had those times where you get a call, you have a client that's starting tomorrow or starting the next day, and you're scrambling to put together a schedule. You should really never be caught off guard. So when you're in the pre-scheduling phase, you have to make sure that you're communicating with your sales team, have a, having a finger on the pulse of what are the clients in the pipeline? What are the schedules that they're looking for? And pre-planning these invisible shifts. At the same time, you also wanna communicate with your human resources team. You as a scheduler have a pretty good sense of, all right, we have a need for caregivers who, ha who have a weekend availability, who have overnight availability, who have live-in availability. So you have to communicate these scheduling needs with other members of your admin team, with your HR team, so that you could always recruit these amazing caregivers and always maintain that proper ratio of caregivers to clients. Um, another really important phase of, another component of the pre-scheduling phase are training shifts. Um, it's not always possible 
But when you're able to do so, I highly encourage you to schedule training shifts whenever you have a caregiver who is working with a, a client for the first time. You know, obviously your caregiver is going to speak with a member of the admin team and wellness team. Go over your client's care plan. They're going to read your client's care plan. They're going to have a very high level sense of your client's needs just by doing this exercise. But whenever you're able to schedule your caregiver who is new with a client, to work alongside a caregiver who knows that client's needs, you're setting up your, your new caregiver for success. They're able to really find out, okay, this is the schedule. These are their likes, their dislikes, their preferences, really on a granular level from a client and a caregiver who has experience with that, with that client. Um, the last component that we look at for pre-scheduling is strategic paid on call. Um, I'm not advocating that you always have caregivers who are paid on call for every single available shift, but you wanna identify those problem shifts, those shifts where you might have the highest likelihood of having a schedule change. So we just had a holiday. Are holidays generally difficult for your agency? Are weekends a, a difficult during the day or overnights on Friday night? Do you tend to have a lot of call outs? And if so, you might wanna consider having paid on-call caregivers who are not actively scheduled, but are available and on call for those times. What this is going to do is it's gonna increase your payroll expense in the short term, but what it's going to ultimately do is save you and your agency a lot of time. And it really might be the difference between your being able to fill a late notice call out or not. Um, Miriam, you would ask, you know, why is it important? What are some of the shortfalls? Um, it's important because you're just putting forth the effort. You're laying the foundation to be successful as an agency and as a scheduler. You know, we're professional schedulers. Our job is to make sure that our clients are served by amazing caregivers that can meet their needs, that they enjoy working with. And all professionals have to do their homework. They have to do their prep work. You look at professional athletes. They have training camp, they have practice, they have pregame warmups, and this is so that they're able to succeed on game day. You look at professional chefs, they order their ingredients, they prepare their mise en place, they plan their menus and their specials. That's, that's so that they're able to have successful dinner service. So as professional schedulers, we want to follow the tips that I just kind of laid out. It takes some time, it takes a lot of effort, but you're just setting yourself up for success.